Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the viewers. Mashallah, yesterday's uh, podcast was highly inspirational. Uh, something different for our viewers. Um, we've been doing this podcast, Akil Bai, for the last three years now. Uh, I don't think we've had anything like we did in the previous session. Uh, Jazakallah, thank you very much. Nice and those that have probably not seen yesterday's, please, please, can I ask yourself to, after this one, go back to yesterday's one, day seven. Absolutely stunning, amazing uh, insight into Brother Akil's journey, life journey, and all the mental health uh, ups and downs he's had, how he supports his family, where he is now. And today, uh, today's session, we'll, we will actually officially get into the diet and fitness of things, <laughs> which is what we intended to discuss. Definitely. But I think the, <clears throat> your journey was so inspiring. Uh, for myself and definitely for those that have seen the, the yesterday's podcast um, I didn't want to let go so hence why I've not let you go <laughs> so I said you know what this straight pod, we're doing a round two right now yeah definitely inshallah doing it here we're here now so just to uh, um, remind everyone it's brother Akil uh, Muhammad Akil um, who has uh, fit to fat um, uh, yeah, what's it called uh, Instagram Instagram so fat to fit fat to fit Akil's world. and and Today's my day, yeah. which was yesterday's uh, podcast title as well. <laughs> and we're going to use that one again today. Inshallah. Today's my day. Subhanallah. What an inspiration. Yeah. Using every day to your complete potential uh, uh, that Allah has given you on, on a daily basis. We mentioned uh, aspects of mental health. Um, could you give us an insight to some links and things that you also have on your uh, social media yeah. pages? Because what I don't want is a message... Uh, a comment which was shared uh, by myself that at times when you go for professional consultation it's almost like the same information is being shared and it's like a uh, protocol a tick sheet that they just mm-hmm. gonna cover but that's the, the, the message has to be clear that wherever there is professional advice definitely you seek that advice first yep. what brother Akil has is his journey yeah and we mentioned in the yesterday podcast it's worked for him and inshallah, it may work for many more, mm. but it doesn't have to work for you, yep. does it? Exactly. I mean, back then, uh, first of all, Asalaamu Alaikum again to everyone. Uh, but back then, we didn't have these resources, or if they existed, we didn't know that these resources mm. were there. Like, okay. Had I known that I could speak to someone about my cousin's death or what I was going through, whether it was financial issues, family issues, whatever, had I known, I probably would have used it. I would probably would have gone to my GP and said, look, I need help. Okay. You know, the fear is always that, you know, if you if you mention mental health, they're going to put you on pills. Not should always you, true. Should you shy away? No. From sharing any difficulty you're having? Because many times it could be like, you know, what, I'm a man. I'm mm. a male. Uh, I've got two children. Yeah. Or I'm in my 50s. You know, by now I should at least be up there, like so strong in my mental health. Yeah. Even they cannot break down, can't they? Everyone can break down. Don't ever be shy about it. You know, just because you're a man doesn't mean you don't cry. If you need to cry, you go and cry. It's as Run. simple as that. You know, every like Run. I looked, I I used to curl up in the corner of my room yeah, you and cry. You mentioned, you know, it was it was hard. Had I not cried, I'd probably be weak. Hmm. Them tears that I dropped made me stronger somehow. You know, and this is what you have to look at. Every drop, like there's a saying, you know, every drop makes a river. Every river makes an ocean. Hmm. Look how strong the ocean is. So them tears that if you need to, you, you let them out. Hmm. If you need to do it in private, do it in private. If you, if, if you can't hold it in front of somebody, just let it out. You okay. Know, okay. You're not weak, weak for it at all. But when it comes to the resources, like on my Instagram, uh, Akil's World, um, if you go on to the highlight section, there's a section that says mental health. Okay. And there's links in the UK where people can reach out to professional help. People will be there to listen mm-hmm. to. Uh, to ask questions and stuff because you got to remember with mental health everyone has a different journey Mm, mm. my journey was different I went probably through the hard way Mm. and even if I didn't have the signs in my dreams and stuff I would have probably still pushed forward you know in pursuit of happiness you know Mm, whatever mm. that happiness would would have been (coughs) so I've got quite a few resources on on my Instagram and you want to share some as as we are already discussing it yeah i mean some some of the resources are uh, mental health uk mm-hmm. uh, so alhamdulillah you can go on to mentalhealth-uk.org 
they've got really good information on there. Okay. Uh, you can even follow them on Instagram as well, instagram.com, uh, mhealthuk. Um, there's also Rethink Mental Illness, uh, and the website for that is uh, rethink.org. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are just some of, and what, probably one of the biggest ones are there is mind.org.uk. Mind.org, um, okay. Yeah. So they're all mental health uh, places where you can get information. And obviously the NHS.com website. So if you go onto NHS.uk, mm-hmm. there's, and just on the search to put depression or anxiety or anything like that, and it'll take you to full resources, which will link to other resources that you can get help mm-hmm. uh, for. And it's absolutely important male or female whatever you're going through if you whatever age or maybe whatever age Mm. well because because it affects us all Mm. at any Mm -hmm. at any stage of life just ask for help you know okay for yourself yeah moving on from that 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 journey that we were mentioning part two of it where it's towards positivity and that change that we were looking for how strong of an impact or a role did mental health play in that physical transition as well as well as a spiritual one that we are, are have mm-hmm. been mentioning and that emotional one. I think from the spiritual aspect was obviously my faith. Now, for those people who are listening or saying, oh, well, I don't have a religion or I don't believe in God or whatever, fine. You know, that's that's your choice. Mm. But from a human being perspective, if you're yep. looking at it from, say, there was no such thing as religion and we were just mm. humans and living a, a, a non-religious lifestyle, for example, okay. there are resources out there that can help you. Because the mind is still the same. We all have thoughts. We all have depression. You know, um, you know, I don't know what the statistics are of, you know, men harming themselves because of the pressure for the family puts on. So mm-hmm. as as the communities grow, where you know, regardless of your religion, the man's responsibility is always to provide. Yep. And that responsibility can be so empowering at mm-hmm. times where you don't know who to turn to. You don't. You're like, if I can't put food on the table then I'm a failure. Hmm. You're not. Hmm. You're trying hmm. your best. I saw my, my dad work, you know, day and night as a bus driver, come home in pain, used to hear him in pain, foot used to hurt, diabetic, to put food on the table. Alone. You know, if the elder generation had the ability to say, beta, you know, I've got this issue, I've got this problem, we would understand a lot more. Hmm. We would hmm. still respect them the same, still provide them, say, okay, you know what, Father? I'm going to take this role and I'm going to support you together because it's all about communication as well. You know, when, when I went like when I was growing up, it was like I didn't know how to talk to anyone about my what I was mm. going through. Because to me, it felt like it was like a sign of weakness, you know, and I didn't want to feel like that because I felt like if I if I was weak, then it's going to impact on my family. You know, they're going to get worried that they don't have anyone to support. But okay. the help is there. Okay. The help, help is, is there. definitely there. And definitely, so I'm, don't keep it in. That's what I'm going to say. Let it out. Hmm. If it's not through professional help, a friend that understands you, you know, I didn't have anyone. I didn't even know which friend to turn to because I didn't know how to open my mouth and speak about my issues that I was having hmm. in life and stuff. But if the resources I knew that I know now, which I mentioned a few moments ago, yep, yep. I probably would have used them. So hard. So hard. Okay, let me ask you one key question then. <coughs> what worked for you then? Talking about now uh, in terms of your fitness. Mm. Uh, I want to... I'm, I'm going to avoid myself asking <laughs> these um, irrelevant questions. Not irrelevant, but off track. So we can stick to the diet, health, yeah. and what we want to... And particularly where you've got to mention Ramadan. Yeah. How does all that come together? So in terms of your diet, what worked for you? Out there, you have so many diet regimes. and uh, So many. YouTube. Yeah. You, you, are, you start watching those YouTube reels and shorts. It's like you can't eat this, you can't eat this, you yeah. can't eat this. Yeah. It's almost like they want you to starve. Exactly. Like I, I, I came across so many. Anything like, you come across, yeah. there's going to be positives and negatives. And they'll portray exactly. in such a way like, Oh, okay, you I mean, they even say don't eat oats. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's like oats. Yeah, I've seen those exactly. As well. Or uh, egg yellows are too high in cholesterol. It's nonsense. But what it is is like you've got all sorts of diets. You've got a ketogenic diet, which is a low carb diet, yep. which was originally designed for people who are epileptic. Okay. Um, and then Atkins took over and yeah, re- yeah, re- yeah, relabeled yeah. it and stuff. I tried the keto diet. 
I lasted okay, you three, have... I have I lasted three months on it. I oh. lost back then I lost a lot of weight on it, but then I gained it back because ah, it didn't okay. fit my lifestyle. Because mm-hmm. with the keto diet is the slightest increase in carb that you eat or protein, it yep. takes you out of ketosis. So okay, it's no point, okay, okay. which is the reason why when it's under controlled uh, things like in terms of you have to monitor your blood glucose, your ketones. And I didn't have that lifestyle. I, did, I didn't want to do it. It didn't work for you then? It didn't work. Then there's like... The so the low- message is really like <clears throat> not every diet plan has to work for you. No. If it's worked for someone or a, or yeah. a group of people, you really need to know one that works for yourself. For his, that, that it's you it's a lifestyle you. change. If you follow a diet, there's more than chances that you're not going to follow it because you're restricting yourself. But Akil Bhai, my family doesn't support me. Hmm. Common question. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to get into this diet. Yeah. Mum doesn't understand. My wife doesn't understand. <laughs> my siblings don't understand. They're like, yeah, just extra, man. Yeah, but Honestly. Co- you, you can't come zor or something. I can't come exactly. Zor, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why are you making life difficult yeah. for everyone? <clears throat> you just sit, the, sit the car like everybody exactly. else is eating. Yeah, just eat, exactly. man. Exactly. Or the the guy Glav Jamun is okay. One one more won't hurt. One more won't hurt yeah. until you realize like twenty six grams of sugar in one glass. And you don't say no so. to burfi when the burfi comes. Exactly, and that's the hard thing. And it goes niyaz niyaz in it. Oh yes, Because if niyaz. you say no to niyaz, yeah, Allah's gonna be. Or oh, gyarmi sharif. Gyarmi sharif, exactly. Gyarmi yeah, no, the You're the one who's putting it in your mouth. Okay. But it's it's the lifestyle choices you make. Most of my family's okay. diabetic. Even if your family is not diabetic, you have to be aware. We've all got the same organs, kind of blood and mm, everything. Mm. The body functions the exact same way. Yeah. If you mistreat it, like you mistreat your car, your car engine is going to stop. Yeah, you put diesel when it's a petrol <clears throat> or a petrol when it's a diesel. Exactly. And this is where I think a lot of the social media nowadays, when they say, oh, don't eat this, don't eat mm-hmm, that. Mm. They don't go into it behind why you shouldn't eat it. Okay. Like I was eating burgers. Like there is no such thing as bad food. Okay, let's clear that out. Okay. <clears throat> and there is no food that's going to make you thin. Okay. Mm. So the biggest understanding when you come to any kind of transition for, so I was eating a lot of crap. I was eating burgers. I was drinking uh, Coke, fizzy, you name you mean, it. What, I was 10 eating, cans, how much was it in a day? 10, 11 cans in oh, a day, wow. including monsters and stuff. <laughs> and August, I stopped. I said, I'm not going to do it gradually. I'm going to stop it now. I'm going to go through the headaches because it's like a drug ad- addiction. You know, the, the more you comfort eat, the more you ag- put excuses into your mind that mm. this is right. And, and and you make it sound right to you because when you explain to people what you're going through, they go, oh, Vajara, that's OK. You go and have a can of Coke. It's only one. You're doing fine. Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, two weeks, you've not had it. Exactly. Just one. Exactly. And but if you're living on them excuses, you're not going to move forward. You're never going to progress. Exactly. Mm. So why make a mistake, learn from it for two days, make the same mistake again, and then try it forward? You're not because you're going back in a circle. So I stopped. I went onto a website called tdee.com. And it's basically, you can go to different sites which... um, calculates your calorie intakes that you should your uh, each person so that would have. be your starting point then, my it? starting point and is that what you would advise <clears throat> for somebody who's wanting to make that change yeah and I'm, for those that probably didn't catch it in the last uh, previous uh, episode Akilbai started from a 20.9 stones stones yeah. hitting 21 stones yeah yeah and now currently at 16 point something uh, 16.4 as of yesterday huge change he was <laughs> yeah. on 4xl I He's currently XL. wearing 2XL and even that's baggy. This is baggy. It's coming down to moment. single XL. Yeah. Get to just large, hopefully, yeah. uh, soon. I was 44 inches in waist. I'm just under 40 inches now. So, 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 yeah. so that's a change. Yeah. So hopefully this will be inspiration for somebody who's looking for that change. And, yeah. and in Ramadan particularly, taking advantage of this, <clears throat> a lot of us become conscious of our diet and health. <laughs> Maybe if Ramadan is going to make you conscious, let's take the advice that Akilva is giving and yeah. let's go through his journey. And wherever we can um, deduce what we can personally take into our lives, yeah. and if it can impact you, then Bismillah, take the advice that inshallah, we are sharing tonight. Definitely. Inshallah. I mean, for me, obviously, the mental aspect was the important thing. So we've covered that, of course. Which was that. Then after you've sorted that out, is you go on, find out how much you should be eating per day. Okay. And TDEE dot? 
dot com. It's dot just com. one of the websites that one I of the websites. Yeah. Okay, but you can download different apps to. So you're basically trying to find a website that can tell you how much calories you need to eat per day. Okay, for your goals, whether it's bodybuilding, weight loss, or maintaining that weight to grow mm-hmm. muscle, mm-hmm. it tells you how much calories you need. So in my case, it was eight. It was two thousand one hundred. So I took away 500 calories. So I was eating roughly about 1800 to 1900 calories a day. But the important thing is, is the breakdown protein, fats and carbs. Mm. Because I wanted to lose fat and grow uh, muscle at the same time as well. My protein intake was high. So okay. I was eating about 150, 160 grams of protein per day. Fair enough. Then my carb sources was about 80 to 100 grams of carbs. And then the rest of it was basically fats. So they were healthy fats. So mm, the fats mm, that I mm. used was like grass-fed butter, mm. uh, ghee, uh, pure clarified ghee. None of this low pack crap or anything like that. Mm. And the reason why, because I looked at the ingredients, the ingredients, if it was extra to what was not meant to be in that product, then it's not good for your health. Okay. So things like grass-fed butter, ghee, which is pure was good for your health mm. and your health. Like in the, in, the, in back in the days that you say, oh, ghee is, too, uh, is going to give you cholesterol and all that. Yeah, because, gen- because it's a product <clears throat> used in subcontinent. The general understanding of exactly. it's from there, it's most likely not going to be clean. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's not going to be exactly. beneficial. Exactly, but small amounts of it, it's good because it's, mm. it's pure clarified, but uh, mm. butter, you know, grass fed and stuff. So once I kind of worked out what foods I needed, okay. the healthy choices. That and this I website need, helped you uh, calculate that it helped me calculate the calories that I needed okay uh, you can go on other sites there's uh, there's an app that I downloaded afterwards uh, the one that I use is my fitness pal you can get the free version or the paid version to be honest you don't need a paid version the free one's just enough that's what I use okay and in there I I literally weigh my food so I weigh how many grams so if I need 100 grams or 200 grams of protein I'll get chicken I'll cook the chicken or air fry it with uh, if I air fry it, I don't put any butter or any sauces on there. If I put it in a pan and I put like grass fed butter or anything, then I'll calculate mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. So that way I know how many grams of protein I'm getting, how many in, in each meal. Yep. Whether I hit my carb intake or the pro or the fats, I didn't bother. I had to hit my protein intake. 1800, what you had in mind? 1500, 1500 protein. Yeah. So the calories is just adds up to it. Okay. The, the protein. I, so but, but, so when I in the past when I was eating burgers crisps I could eat that I could eat pizzas I could eat and eat and eat and still be hungry. In fact, one of your videos is where you've got this big piece in your hand, haven't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good so days. Quite bad. Nice good days, pieces. Days, I don't know. I would eat. I would. I would eat a twelve inch in like ten minutes. Oh, on your then, own? On my own. I would. I would cane a ten inch pizza easily and still feel hungry. Okay. Literally. okay. I would have a burger. I would sit in a car outside the place and eat, eat, eat pizzas and burgers and still feel hungry. Foodies back then, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <clears throat> Shame they didn't do any offers then. <laughs> yeah. But alhamdulillah, when I switched to all natural foods, so okay. protein. So my my uh, since August, I've had no food, uh, no uh, sugar, no uh, bread, no sugar, no sugar. Did I hear that correct? Yeah. So I've th- I had I recently have been having the odd digestive chocolate biscuit. Yeah, because I'm a chocoholic. Yeah, so okay, I need a bit. Of, okay, okay. But as long as it fits my calorie intake. Yeah, within I, that I'll have intake. It within okay, that. Yeah. So um, no sugar, no no fizzy stuff apart from sparkling water, which I put lemon juice in or mm-hmm. apple cider vinegar, and that I've been working from there. So the protein is helping me keep fuller throughout the day. Okay. Now I don't eat in the morning. I never have. And when I used to eat in the morning, I used to find that by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I used to be drained. So I used to have porridge in the morning or like Weetabix and stuff uh, with milk. Um, and by 11, tell- by 10, 11 o'clock, I was drained. I was like 12 o'clock would hit. I'm like, why am I so tired? You know, my- okay, what's the science behind that cooking? <clears throat> so what they say is certain people. So when when you have something in the morning, your insulin spikes with okay. certain foods. So the sugar in the uh, in the bloodstream will go. And then basically from there, after a certain while, when it runs out, you have a little dive. Yep. So you have this rush of energy going into your bloodstream and then all of a sudden it takes a nose dive. Yep. And that's where the energy levels. Now half my family are diabetic, so I try to understand that concept a bit more. So I thought so this okay, is why they force off a meal at twelve o'clock then. By yes. twelve one o'clock they're gonna they, the, the urge is there to have another meal. Exactly. Uh, or break it down into three or six smaller mm. meals. Like back in the day you say they have small six small I eat two meals a day, maybe sometimes three. 
Okay. Uh, my meals, my, I'll, I'll start off. So my first meal in the day is around just after Zohar Namaz. Um, so it'll be, I'll start off with the protein. Then I'll have basically some um, uh, blueberries and avocado. I have an avocado in all my meals. So 100, 200 grams of avocado. Um, that's got my healthy fats in there, good source of fiber in there, uh, which will help my digestion. And when I go to the toilet, <laughs> um, protein essential there and I'll have a fruit. Okay. So in the past, I used to be scared of fruit from the uh, sugar from the fruits because everybody used to say, "Oh, fructose, fructose, yeah, 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 this." Yes, yes, yes. But your body naturally breaks that down into where but that's it the needs good stuff, to. isn't it? Exactly. That's what it needs. Exactly. So what I do now is, and this is what I've been doing since August, is two hours before my workout, which is my main, my first meal. Is this the morning workout, the evening? <clears throat> I I train fasted in the morning. Okay. So in the in the morning when I do my so half three four o'clock. Um, Half or when I'm in the gym, I'll, I do uh, fasted cardio. So for 45 minutes, mm. I'll do either the mm. stairmaster or the treadmill. Um, and with the treadmill, I don't run uh, because it's it's something called zone two training. Basically, okay. it's where your heart me. where your heart rate is between 120 or 130 mm. um, beats for a fat burning zone. Anything on top of that is you're doing more cardiovascular and stuff. So if you keep it within that zone uh, of your heart rate, you, um, you're burning fat. So what they say is um, put your treadmill on an incline of anything from 10 to 15 mm. and put the speed to about three, uh, like anything from 2.5 to 3.5 to 4, okay? And you're just doing steady walk for 35, 40 okay. minutes. And that burns fat more than actually having to run mm. because you're in the fat burning zone. Anything after it's just more... It's uh, all just cardio then. <clears throat> it's more cardio, more mm. oxygen going and into for, you. For, for you and what you wanted to achieve was a... Weight loss, wasn't it? I was at that time, yeah. I, I just focused on the weight loss. I was like, I just need to get... I just Somebody like me would need a cardio. Yeah. So and my, so my the weight loss, yeah, I'll be con. Exactly. So now, with my training, so now that I'm 16 and a half stones, obviously I have certain loose skin and stuff. Now I just mm. want to build muscle, inshallah, and get toned. So mm. for my next 12 months is now is... I'm still gonna. I've increased the, uh, my calories. So from 1800, I'm now about 2100 calories. Okay. So my protein's gone from 150 grams of protein per day to almost 200, 250. And this you're, you're doing because you're actually <coughs> weighing your, I, your, I weigh your, everything. your meat, your proteins, Every and everything. Yeah, before thing. you actually go, either before cooking or post cooking. It, so if you're weighing the meat, it has to be after you've cooked it. Okay. So not the dry weight. Okay. So cook the meat. Because then all the water's evaporated from yep. there, so you get the what you're actually eating. Weigh it, put it in there. And the thing is, it helps you mentally as well, mm. because you're preparing your own food. You're 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 in control of what's going into your body. Mm. The last mm. time I bought something from um, outside was any burger place or something. No, not touched it. So I ever. See that that, that that's prophetic <clears throat> teaching in that as well. Everything mm. you're mentioning, I'm I'm intentionally keeping silent because there's. Sunnah behind all of this. Yeah. Ulama have described Nabi Salatu Salam's diet was everything he did was 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 to perfection Simple. anyway. Yeah. And his diet would be very similar to what you were describing right now. Yeah. And the diet his diet was basically when he ate, he ate to feed the body. Yes. Not to feed anything else or his um Obviously, hunger is there, but we, we luxury eat. Mm. We've got the luxury of going to any shop and getting anything. Yeah. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his, in the teachings is he ate to feed the body. Exactly. Like you say that uh, some people uh, eat to live. Yeah. Some live yeah. to eat. Well, it's like even like I, I used to be in this hype where I need to get protein shakes and all that. Yes. Okay, Since okay. August. It's good you mentioned that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So somebody on this, this gym hype, mm. you know, the, the protein shakes and yeah. all these things. That's what's first thing that actually hits you. You go into a gym and then you've got big posters of buy with this one, buy this yeah. one. So, are, are, are they even beneficial? Depends how you use them properly. If you use them properly, then yes, you are getting the protein source, but it's not 100% protein okay. that you're getting. Because if you think about it, look at all, if you look at the ingredients, the extra mm. chemicals that are in there, and if you think, well, hang on, if I'm spending 40 pounds on protein, I can get, I can spend 14 pounds on lean meats like chicken breast for example yeah. which will last me a week or two cook it for yourself cook you know it for it's myself, halal, and it's i'm clean. getting 100 percent protein from it wow. that's going to help me and it's going to keep me fuller mm. so if you're having it in a drink form how long is it until you pee out 
you know, it's like when you drink water a couple of hours later, it's, it's, it's gone. gone through your system. So it's the exact, exact, exact mm. same. And it's more filling as well, isn't it? I love feeling. I'd rather the, have the, a solid food in my body yeah. than a drink. Than a drink Obviously, if you haven't got the time and you need to get that protein, then fine. If it helps you, mm. it helps you and stuff like that. Like I used to buy uh, protein yogurts. Okay. And I was like, hang on, I'm eating protein yogurts, but I'm still, my skin's quite enough spotty and stuff like that. What, what's going on here? Looked at the back of the ingredients, artificial stuff in there and everything. I'm like, forget that. And the, and the protein that was in there wasn't even like 100% 25 grams of protein. Mm. So I'm like, well, my chicken, if I'm having 300 grams of uh, chicken, that's like almost 80, 90 grams of protein that I'm getting there. I'm more fuller for, until my next meal. Should, and nice, that helps nice, nice. so much. So mm. clean, clean meats like uh, steaks or chicken. If you can't afford steaks, chicken is your best alternative. And the main power source, eggs. Eggs. Eggs are just amazing. Like I'm, I think I'm probably eating about five or six eggs a day. A day. Okay. Yeah, fried or boiled. See, mums would be saying, oh, bok garamunda. <clears throat> garamunda, exactly, exactly. But the thing is, it's the protein. The yeah. Protein is like um, um, uh, uh, acts uh, like a thermogen in your body. Mm. So, you, so it's not only repairing your muscles for growth and everything, it's also keeping your metabolism high. Which is why it's keeping you fuller for, for a longer of time. Okay. Another question then. How do you know what works for you then? <clears throat> Everyone's different. So some, I was just going to, that was going to be yeah. my, my, my next comment. Everyone's different. Yeah. You had your diet plan. Yeah. And we mentioned that, you know, not every diet has to work for you. No. But how do you know what it is working for you? The biggest thing is, regardless of which diet you follow, mm. if you follow a diet, is calories. If you're eating more than what your body's meant to be consuming in that day, yeah. you're going to put on weight. It's also going to go somewhere. It has isn't to go it? somewhere. Exactly. So think of us extra food as being stored into your, uh, as fat, okay. as energy. So until you tap into that fat source to burn as energy, mm. it's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere yeah. So yeah. let's say the average calorie is, less for, they say for man, is like 2,400. To put on a pound of fat, I think you need to eat almost 6,000 calories or 3,000 calories extra on top of your daily maintenance oh, wow. to put on a pound of fat. Now, I think for every uh, gram of carbs you have, mm. three pounds of that is going to be ad added as weight, water, water weight. So when you weigh yourself and you see that three pound increase and you say, oh, I haven't lost weight, it's because the carbs have got the water in it. So you need to deplete the carbs yep, to yep. know how much you actually, actually weigh. Mm. So... The biggest thing is whether you follow a, d a diet is work out what your calories are and don't overeat that. Okay. If you're losing, f if you need to lose fat, then you reduce the calories okay. until yeah. until you got to the stage where you want to get to. The other thing is the training aspect is once you've got your diet sorted is the way I don't like the word diet because diets restrict you. It's your lifestyle that you need to change. If you okay. do not change your lifestyle, and you're following a diet, there is about 99% or 95% chance that you are not going to follow it. Mm -hmm. Because it, like Slimming World will be like, this point system, that point system, you can't, it's like I have women at work say, oh, I, I, I can drink alcohol today because there's only six sins or something like that. And you're like, what are you talking about? How many calories are in a, in, in a glass of wine? You know, you've, okay. exactly. So you have to be mindful on what you mm. feel. It's a lifestyle that comes with all of this change, isn't it? hundred percent. Because mm. you want, you need to be happy with what you eat. So if you like a burger, for example, okay. eat the burger, right? But burn it. But burn it. You use that energy to burn it. So for example, so my pre-workout is, uh, a tablespoon of raw honey, uh, and uh, and like I'll have a, uh, with Greek yogurt. That's okay. my pre-workout. So the sugars and uh, that I'm getting from there, I'm just burning out when I'm when and I'm. And it's training. pure sugars. It's pure sugars. It's actually good for you. It goes into your system. This is what people need to not be afraid of. It's it's natural sugars, and your body is designed to break them sugars down. Mm. Your body is such a powerful resource that even today so we don't understand so the full aspects of it. Look at the Quran Sheaf. One of the things in the Quran for healing is honey. Mm. And we are too scared of touching honey because, because well, we think it's too sweet. Exactly. Obviously, if you're dying. I have these discussions with, with my family members as well. And they're like, <laughs> no, you can't have honey. It's too sweet. I'm like. And then they have a gulab jamun. <laughs> <laughs> gulab jamun is the one that's going to be killing you. Exactly. And I said, look, this doesn't, doesn't spike your <clears throat> glucose levels in any way. Yeah. It's actually beneficial for you. I mean, even dates. dates? I have this discussion. You are, I don't have too many dates. Yeah. Because at, sugar high. No, at doesn't. the moment, what I do is. So 
say for in the morning mm. I'll have or even after Ramzan is okay. I have two or three dates pre-workout before I, before I work out okay. if I don't have the raw honey and I just put uh, I get grass-fed honey uh, grass-fed uh, um, the butter okay like the one that I use is Kerry's gold uh, I, I just love that butter because it's pure and it's grass-fed I'll put like 10 grams of butter into my honey okay. so I'm getting the fats and the sugars from there all from in one all in one and that's my pre-workout see if it works for you exactly so the main thing is is understanding what you put into your body in the right mm. ways you don't need extra chemicals into your body that you don't need why would like you said why would mm. you put diesel in a car that needs petrol it's as simple as okay. that uh, gym during month of ramadan yeah how practical is it and, and how could could somebody ramadan 2024 uh, access gym along with the, the uh, 16 hours that we're remaining yeah. empty anyway I think so we are alhamdulillah fortunate that our religion teaches us about fasting yeah. you know Prophet Muhammad used to Salamu fast on a Monday and a Thursday now that's the famous 5-2 diet, five that, two they've, diet. That, that they think they've in, exactly that they've miraculously in, in, invented and it's sci- scientifically proven that it kills off the dead old cells and regenerates your body and stuff and this the Muslims been doing for 1400 years uh, exactly and, and that's, this that's is beautiful new. religion yeah. isn't it and this is in in, in the, the quran and the hadith you yeah. know, it, it tells you there specifically you know this uh, is embedded uh, in our tradition exactly and we need to embrace that because it's helping us not from a, only from a spiritual mental aspect but for the health as well mm. so during ramzan uh, i still eat healthy uh, my family are eating smosse pakore in Oi. the morning fry ups parathe and stuff like that i'm like no i'm taking care of my internal organs you know um so my morning is like say three or four eggs fried or boiled or if i don't want that i'll have like 200 or 300 grams of protein in the morning with and this, that's it with this chicken and about a liter of water okay i do use sea salt so the sea salt that i use is uh, celtic sea salt uh, or a bit of himalaya himalaya salt only because of the potassium mm. and it keeps you hydrated for a bit a bit longer uh, so even if you're not fasting just add a bit of sea salt drink it don't do overdo it with the sea salt but i just sprinkle it on all my food it just adds that extra okay. Uh, okay. benefits to it mm-hmm. so because i know what my calorie deficit is during ramzan is hard sometimes especially when it comes to training so the the, the biggest difficulty is when you're training you're going to get dehydrated so you can push up to a point where your body is going to say i need water then you know mentally you need to slow down a little bit so i think the best time to sometimes train if you are going to train is probably an hour before you break fast and just smash it out. You'll be tired, mm-hmm. but you, you know you want to smash out the results. So a weight session or a 25, 30 minute walk on an incline. Before, before you've thought. Before you've thought. And then, then this year, because the nights are so long. Yeah. You could hit gym during the night. Easily. Or even an hour before Easily. Suhoor. Yeah. Do an hour before Suhoor, come home in good time, yeah. have a Suhoor. That's it. Yeah, ready, like ready, I, ready I, I trained today around about lunchtime. Um, I did like 30 minutes on the... Um, uh, Stairmaster okay. and I was thirsty afterwards then I took it down then I did a quick uh, burnout on the chest uh, exercises and I was thirsty but then I still kept kept calm and stuff because I had another like four or five hours yep. left yep. before breaking my fast but when I broke my fast glass of water then a protein sauce mm. then pray so they have a bit of a break in between yep. Yep. and then some fruit that's it. So hard. Nothing else. So you hard. do not need to eat parate, samosa, pakore, fried ups just because you're fasting. So you feed your body what it needs. Mm. And like I said, it's I don't follow a diet. Just change your lifestyle. Lifestyle is more, more important than diet. Important. I like that comment. It's I like as comment. simple as that. <laughs> okay. Another question then. A lot of this comes with consistency. Mm. Now <clears throat> consistency only can happen when you have a drive yeah behind the drive there's got to be what we call determination exactly yeah many of us we know and i'm sure the viewers will, will know they will have experience in the past where they started gym hard yeah because they've they've seen a few motivational videos they've seen somebody transition from this to this and they're like you know yeah. what that's gonna yeah. be me okay he's seen this video tomorrow morning he gets <laughs> he buys his gaze he's ordering all the stuff he needs off amazon or whatever yeah. He goes to gym, five, six days go by, then drops. Drops. Yeah. Motivation versus determination. I'm not Tell a big me. believer in motivation. Why not? Because uh, it lasts a few moments. 
But what what if somebody keeps going back to those videos? Keeps they can back? keep going back to the videos, but why are they? The thing ah, is, good, it's like good. if you keep going back to the same resource to motivate you, then that motivation hasn't worked for you. Yeah. So <laughs> it's as simple as it's, that. It's, it's, it's nice the way you put it there. <laughs> but, it, but it's like, you have to show up. Yeah. You have to, like every day is a blessing that Allah has given you the energy. Mm. You know, mm. let's say forget the religious aspect. Okay. And let's say you don't believe in anything. But you know, you, you, you've woken up the next day to make the most of you, what you've got now. Mm. So you got to make the most of that, yep, of, yep. of that day. Okay. You have to get up and be the best that you can be, even at your weakest so, uh, point. Turn up. Don't turn back. Simple as door. When a door closes and you're stuck in a wall, like for example, and you can't get out, mm. what's the only exit? It's that door. Who's going to open it? You are. You. You're either going to break through it or find another way to break out of it. So it's you who's doing it. The door's not going to automatically open unless somebody, unless you're waiting for someone to open that door for you, mm. you're going to be waiting a lifetime. So the only person that you have to rely on for it's motivation you. is yourself. So you are your energy. Mm. You're the one who got yourself out of bed. You're the one who picked you picked yourself up when nobody right. was there for you. Yep. You're the one who stood, sat in the corner of that room, mm. cried your heart out, so that nobody could hear in the morning to get yourself stronger. Mm. So it's you, you have to rely on. You have to believe in yourself. See, the mind is such a powerful it's organ a, Allah's given you. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and we haven't even touched, let's say, 10% of what the mind can actually do. Mm. Imagine what it can do once we, if, if we ever, you know, fully lock it. But this is highly motivation in itself, even for, even though we don't want to rely too much on motivation. Yeah. But to get you up and going. And then after the motivation has, has clicked, mm. it now needs to translate into determination. Exactly. The thing is, mo I won't say like, don't believe in motivation or inspiration and stuff. Follow up, believe in the person's, a person's journey that they've gone from something from bad mm. to where they are now. Mm. And look at the progress they've done. You'll see fat to fit videos. Like I get people who've not seen me at weddings when I've done a shoot. For like the wedding that I did in Leeds on uh, Saturday. Yeah. A lot of the videographers and some of the family haven't seen me since pre-COVID. And they're like, wow, man, what's the secret? Okay. I said, the secret is I turned up every single day. So I was tired at four in the morning. I turned up into the gym and I trained. I couldn't do six minutes on the treadmill day one. Yeah, now I'm doing 45 minutes mm. at level six, seven, and I'm not getting to, I'm pushing. So you're going to push, if your car fails and it's on a, on a hill, are you going to let it fall or are you going to push it forward? You're going to push forward. So that's where the mm, drive, mm, mm. you need to be the drive of your motivation. So you need to be your story, basically. You know, yeah. you, you need to be, book. exactly. You need to be a person where I say, inshallah, if somebody looks at my journey and says, you know what, this guy did, I'll give you a big example. Go on. There's a guy podcast, uh, it's a book, uh, David Goggins. Mm -hmm. I think it was David Goggins. Uh, uh, it's Goggins, yeah. The audio book is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you, if you can't afford the audio book, yeah, just sign up to a 30 day trial of, uh, Audible on Amazon mm. and download uh, uh, David Goggin's uh, audio book, okay. his, his first one. Listen to it. He's in it. He, he narrates it with another author uh, who's helped him write the book. His journey was basically he had to lose 100 pounds mm. of fat to join the Marines. Oh. But the, the but the inspiration is how he got there. He, his dad was abusive to him and everything, and his mother and everything. You know, he, it, it was so much crap that he was going to. But this guy, basically, a troubled beginning. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And this is what I'm trying. What I want to say is, everyone's journey, whether it's good or bad, or if they feel it's good or bad, has a starting point. Mm. Mm. And everyone, the only way you're going to get through it is by pushing forward. Well, Don't know. ever stop believing in yourself and saying, you know what, I've got no opportunities. I'm going to end my life or whatever. You, you can never think that way, you know. And if you do, you've got to push forward and say, no, I'm going to change this for me. Before I change it for anyone else, I'm changing it mm. for me. Because if it works for me and I've set my foundations that no one can break, then I'm not going to allow anyone to come into my life and break so my hard. foundation. So, so create your own foundation by knowing what you're going to do. You will get knockbacks. 100% you will get knockbacks. But inshallah, you know, you got to believe in yourself. And then if from a religious perspective, you know, Allah will guide you. 
people don't the opportunities stop believing. Will come, the doors will open. Doors will always the open. The people will come into your life that will take you to the stage where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than crying about what's happened in the past. Yeah. You mentioned that in the previous podcast as well. Look at the opportunity that lies by exactly. the second. Exactly. If you are still crying about your past, you've mm. not moved forward. You're, not. You're still in the past. So what's the point of like... Stop living in the past. Exactly. Stop living in the future. Live yeah. in the present. Yeah. And what you do have control over mm. is now. You don't exactly. have control over the past. Exactly. You don't have control over the future. Yeah. You have control over now. Now. And the thing is, like... I've always said it, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything you want. I'm not going to hide my ass, good or bad. Mm. I'll be upfront. You can judge me. You cannot judge me. It's up to you. End of the day, my biggest judger for me from a religious perspective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. Uh, it's him who I'm going to answer to. Because not even the little hairs or the particles at the tip of my tongue are going to lie when I'm in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Mm. Now, if you don't believe in God, that's fine. But you have to be accountable for yourself. You know, Hold yourself accountable. It's yours, yourself. Like I'll go to Davids and stuff and people say, better have this or better have this or we've got some Pepsi for you or whatever. You can say no. There's nothing rude about saying no. Hmm. You can you know, you know, can be polite about it and say, you know, rather than this, can I just have water? And, you know, rather than putting sugar in my tea, Difficult, just that. do that. It's hard. It's hard, I'm telling you. It is. You. But then you have to look at the analogy where is how, how quickly do you want the poison to kill you? Hmm. You know, if your body is really changing, like Alham, like I can't tell you how great I feel losing almost four and a half stones from August to now, mm. cutting it out, my lifestyle changes and stuff. Like at the moment, <laughs> I'm craving uh, on my Instagram there's these funky uh, croissants that people are showing these square shaped ones and these oh, triangle yeah, ones, yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Just I'll, one. I'll have one, but I'm gonna wait until August. Because I'm meeting a friend that I've not seen for about four, a couple of years okay. and stuff. And I thought, okay, okay when, when I meet this person, I'm going to, on that day, have it. But I'm going to train up for that. Okay. I, I'm going to make sure that I can... It's going to be a build-up. Build-up. Because I'm not just going to, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm craving a croissant for no I mean, reason. If you worked hard for a year, you're going to reward yourself after a year. 100%. Okay, 100%. fair enough. Fair like, enough. I don't even cheat on my meals. I just, I have, a, I have, alhamdulillah, a food lifestyle where I enjoy the food that I eat. Okay. I don't crave anything. And, the, and, and talk about you're, you, you're confident in what you're eating. Yeah, 100%. Because it's easy accessible. Mm. I can, like, I eat Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt. Yep. And if I've got a sweet uh, craving, I'll get some mangoes, I'll get some uh, papaya, uh, stick them in there, put a tablespoon of raw honey in there, mix it. That's my sweet craving gone. So on. Um, and it's natural. Why do I need to go buy a protein bar that's got like probably five grams of protein in it and about 1,600 other chemicals in there? I, I just don't see the point. And I used to do that. Okay. I, I used to do that to the whole point. And it was like, my skin's a bit flaky today. and Or I'm feeling still tired after eating this bar. But Alhamdulillah, since August, since I've been eating the way I've been mm -hmm, eating, mm -hmm. I've literally like you like become conscious and and the, the the word you used before was lifestyle. It's your lifestyle, mm. your lifestyle, because mm. your lifestyle changes your mood, your f things around okay. you. How do you keep yourself determined? It's been what uh, eight nine months now. Yeah. How do you keep yeah. yourself motivated? Well, uh, motivated, determined to continue going on this. I think it's the emphasis of wanting to be better than what I was yesterday. So hard. That's what I look at it. Because yesterday is my today's, uh, so my uh, yesterday's uh, was my weakness, today's my strength. So, um, so today I need to make sure that yesterday's weaknesses are now stronger today. Yes. And then as I grow, like at that example, six minutes on the, I, I hate this, uh, two machines I hate in the gym. Okay. <laughs> the Stairmaster and the rowing machine. Oh, okay. Two okay. machines I absolutely hate, right? Stairmaster, I went on the first time because I used to I watched some uh, Instagram thing and said, oh, the Stairmaster is the best for mm, fat loss mm. and stuff. So I thought, yeah, 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 let's give it a try. I'm only climbing a Can't stair. that hard. Exactly. Six minutes, at level one, six minutes into it, I was like, oh, Allah, oh my God. I'm, Call I'm, ambulance. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm, I'm doing this. Forget this year. And to me, I thought it was like, I've been on it for an hour. I was only six minutes. Okay. And I was like, right, following day, let's come in. I'm conquering this. My determination was the um, mindset. Yeah, my mindset was like I put a target in, in my head. I said three months. I am going into there and I'm going to do 45 minutes. Forget 30 minutes. I'm hitting 45 minutes in three months time. I don't care what it takes. 
I was willing to crawl up them stair, like stairmaster, to get forty-five minutes. I used to like look around here, yeah, and I used to see the women here yeah, doing like ten level ten, and the guys doing like eleven and stuff, like running up there. I'm like, bro, I'm I'm gonna be there soon. Don't worry. <laughs> You're there crying for level one. I'm there crying at level one. I'm like, yeah, right, what have I done? Why? Do, what, and why am I? I was like, there's no way I'm touching a burger after this. But it was every day I just showed up. Now Allah shukr, yeah. Now I can forty five minutes first thing in the morning, and then I've still got the energy to push out a bit of mm, weight and mm. stuff uh, afterwards. So, uh, so okay, on, on, okay. You just mentioned after that you've got energy. Yeah, I still have energy afterwards. Many people believe like after going to a, a a gym session that they're not gonna have any energy left. Yeah. People that do really want to get serious about it, it's like the only opportunity they have is whilst they're driving back from work. Yeah. Some people hit gym. And come back. Some people are like, nah, I'm too tired. I don't like to fight. Mm. Can't go gym. It's yeah. gonna kill me off. How do you work around the the, the 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 mindset behind that? So I'm kind of fortunate, or I'm kind of not fortunate, but I say I'm determined to train. I was training twice a day. Okay. So I was training at half four in the morning, doing my cardio. I was posting on Instagram. People were like, oh, you're crazy, getting up at that time and stuff like that. And there was only two or three people in there. And then I used to train in the but afternoon. Is it in the case of the most successful people, entrepreneurs, billionaires, millionaires? Yeah. They're all those people that wake up early. Exactly. They do. Yeah. I mean, they're all up at five o'clock. Yeah. They the, get all the most important things that they need doing before the public even gets up. Exactly. They've done yeah. the basic, the, the most essentials of their life already. Yeah, and they've done. They've got that out of the way. Then they can focus on their life afterwards. Mm. They've got the main things that they need to establish the, how the day routine is going to go. Done. Read the newspaper. Had the food. Done the training. That's sorted. Now they focus on the real aspect of the life. And by nine, ten o'clock, they're in bed. I mean, that's where they give time to themselves, isn't it? To themselves. And that's nobody else important. is awake. No family no. members, kids, wife, no. everyone sleep. It's my time. I'm going to focus yeah. on myself. And now I understand in our, in our culture, in our community, it's like, oh, but I've got this family or my mom. My, mom's, my mom and dad were ill. Okay. So even in that uh, period when they were ill, I still tried to train or do something. But the mental health impact hit me hard mm. until to the point where I had to put everything aside. Regardless of how um, ill they were, I had to get my health sorted. Okay. Uh, and I was like, no, if I'm not sorting myself out, I can't look after anyone. And that's where I basically pushed myself. So for me, it was challenging myself to be better than I was yesterday. And I still do that. I'm still nowhere where I need to get to mm. at the moment. So I'm 16 and a half stones as of like yesterday. So what's, what's the target? So my aim now is I want to get, so I'm about 24, 25% body mm. fat now. I want to get to at least 12%. Um, that's going to take a lot of work because mm. uh, it's not easy. Uh, but because I've Another I've, two years? Probably a year. A year? Yeah. The, the way I'm training at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I think let's, let's, I'll let's see you let, next year. Let's uh, put ourselves on a target. <laughs> next year's podcast. Put it this way. My birthday is on February 25th. I want to be ready for February 25th. Well, my next Just year's it. podcast, I want to have you here again. Inshallah. And then we'll go through what's happened in this, <laughs> in this year. I'll come, I'll come back double the size. No, no, Let's no. talk about mental health now, yeah? yeah? But you know what it is? I don't think I'll fall back into my old ways at all. I feel energetic with the food. I mean, if you've everything. been through, look, if somebody's going to flop, yep. it's going to happen in the first two weeks or the first month. Exactly. By that time, it's gone. But this is the thing. In the first two weeks, when you think you're going to fail, you need to push. You can't step back. You need to push forward. So See, that is pivotal. Yeah. It's make or break at that point. hundred percent. Even if it means you can't do 10 minutes, you do five minutes. You turn up and do the five minutes. Just Simple turn as. Just turn up in five minutes. I don't care if you have to crawl there, whatever, you do, the fi you do the five minutes and get it done. If you can't do five minutes, you do two minutes. But you get something something done. You're showing mm. up on there. Now, just don't be lazy. Don't say, yeah, I just showed up. I'm walking out the door. No, you got to show up and put in the, mm. put, uh, put in because the work. Because if, if you let one day slip, yep. that a week later, that one day becomes another one day. Another one day. And then it becomes a two day. Yeah. Yeah. Then somebody's wedding will come up. Somebody's exactly. birthday will come up. Yeah. My child's turned two. Yeah. His child turned one. Got to take family out. So many excuses so will come many, up. So many. And you can't. It's your life. You're, like I said, you're accountable for everything. Mm. You can't let society say to you, oh yeah, go better, go treat yourself or your friends at work, colleagues and stuff. Like I work in a hospital. Mm. You know, my 95 nine job is in the hospital. And they sell more more kind of fizzy stuff in there and unhealthy food than healthy food in, in hospitals. Okay. It, it's absolutely crazy. And then 
going back to that question that you said, you know, how people can focus when they're saying, I've got no energy after work. When you're at your weakest, you know how far you can push. Oh, beautiful. It's as simple as this. Mm. So you got to remember, when you're down, you are getting yourself up. I used to be absolute. Like, it's been now almost 48 or 28, more than 28 hours since my last sleep. And I feel quite energetic or <laughs> ready. You know, I've I've eaten my calories that I needed to do. I feel quite ener energetic. I, I was even thinking of going to the gym afterwards. But after like, this. It's what, like two o'clock or something in the morning. But it's determination. It's as simple as that. When mm. you're tired after work, have your gym kit with you. Okay. Get in the gym or change at work. Mm. Change into your gym gear at work. Go to the gym, train, and that's it you know you've come in on there. Now, if you're extremely tired, don't think, all right, you know, I'm going to skip a day today. Mm. Just go in and do a bit of a walk. Just do that inclined walk if you want to burn fat. You know, for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, how hard? A, yes, it is hard. I won't say how hard is it, but it is hard, trust me. Uh, you can get out of breath. But after you've got there, you know you've conquered it. A month will go past year, you will start seeing results. The energy but levels will start to rise. 100%. 100%. You'll have a lot more, more reserves yeah. that you can tap I into. used to get out of breath walking 100 meters. Hmm. Now I'm running upstairs. I do I do want to do the Three Peaks Challenge uh, one day. Uh, and I inshallah. do want to um, do the Mount Everest Base Camp Challenge as well. Okay. Inshallah. So I, I, I have set my aims high, but you need to hmm. put a name to target to. Okay. Uh, Does it. Fun. Now, for, for many people, it, they need a community. Yeah. They pushed and driven if they have two three other people on the same hype 100 percent, yeah because then you will bounce off each other's energies exactly yeah and yep. you motivate each other <clears throat> if one's feeling down or feeling a bit weak mm. tired it's like come on yeah let's go man let's go. we've been doing it for, for five weeks now you're <laughs> yeah. not gonna let us down are you yeah so some uh, some sometimes you need that push you do you do i mean for what yourself what worked so I mean, for so far everything i've heard is it's been a solo journey it has been all, all the way but what happened that, though, that takes a, a considerable level of determination it is, it is a lot of times i wanted to quit but i'm like no no if it was someone no. like me i could do anything <laughs> until i've got one or two people with me yeah i know myself no i will by myself but you know what because i've been posting my journey as well okay. people have been following it and some of them send good comments saying that you've inspired me to do cer certain things and stuff okay and that pushed me as well not to give up on that aspect as well so i shared that yeah. shared that journey yeah. and yeah. in the mornings when i used when i was training in the uh, like half three half four in the morning there was about four or five people uh, there and they used to go hey it's nice seeing you and we used to get talking about the journey and we helped each other we knew we were there so you like had I, your own little community a out, little community out for, just built out of, out of nowhere mm. they're like you weren't here last week are you okay yeah i was working in another i was training at a different gym and stuff uh so yeah so i, I train at two gyms just in case the other one's full okay. so i train at nrg gym in stretford and any of the gym groups around the uk uh, as long as i can get my workout okay done alhamdulillah okay. I also do a lot of hikes. So every, so I do a bit of, with my friend uh, James. Uh, we do uh, landscape photography. Well, he got me into landscape photography. Mm, um, mm. I still find it boring, but <laughs> so but we do long walks. We sometimes do about two thousand steps in a day. Uh, like we, we'll probably go every two weeks or every three weeks. Mm. Uh, but it's something that inshallah I'm working on a on a project at the moment where I want to organize. Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'm going to start training to become a personal trainer and nutritionist so okay. I can use my knowledge a bit more and learn, especially from what I've been through. And I sure. want to open the fitness camps, not only in the UK, but in different countries where mm. uh, we can do like not just halal uh, fitness for brothers and sisters and stuff, but even couples who want to train together in Spain or wherever, where we can come in for two, three weeks, do hiking, do activities to strengthen us and make us stronger. Not yeah. like a religious camp or anything like that, but just focused on fitness and, and health, well fitness, exactly. diet, routines. Exactly. Just mm. to break into yeah. and, it, and it helps motivate uh, each other. Like there are groups out there. There's, I think there's the Muslim hikers, um, which are out quite popular, mashallah, uh, who take people on hikes and stuff. Um, I'm starting something similar with local people. And inshallah, if they're interested, they can just message me on my Instagram and go for walks inshallah. and stuff. Um, Ramzan is the best time for people to understand how much they're eating and stuff. I think with life's experiences, especially this past couple of months mm, and stuff, mm. if I forget my journey, for example, the biggest thing that's kind of motivating me, I mean, I'm, like I said, I don't, I'm not a big 
motivate into motivation but i say i'd say inspiration is our brothers and sisters in palestine um mashallah you know you know they've got nothing and th- th- the passion they have is something that drives you like not only from a religious perspective mm-hmm. yeah but th- the media shows them uh, fighting for rice no they're getting the rice and cooking for everyone so hard do you know so we hard. we have to be grateful for what 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 we have so you hard. know i know we talked about calories and how much protein our body needs for whatever training but whatever you have like i was in a situation where i couldn't afford that much food you know and we did what we could do mm. at the end of the day it's as simple as that but eat the right foods whatever you allah puts in front of you is a blessing but regardless of whatever you eat whether it's with chemicals or not with chemicals you need to make sure that you are in that calorie deficit it's as simple as that processed non processed fresh yeah. non fresh organic non organic whatever it is whatever it is you need to make sure you're in a calorie deficit mm. you work out that calorie deficit you know exactly how much i know it's sometimes a bit hard with opening your app and uh, like people see me scanning barcodes I'm like no no I'm not trying to rob anything or anything or sell on Amazon sellers or something I'm trying to work out how much of each of grams is protein carbs fats and stuff like that mm. so it's a good way to so track it will it. take let's say a few weeks to get into getting, the habit getting into the habit to get into knowing the habit. your figures yeah your deficits your calories yeah and then because you will have have done so many products you'll know roughly what's going on you exactly. can put it into the application you mentioned as well yeah. uh, and then that will help you calculate things Exactly. Hopefully then you're well on your way. You are as long as like I says, it's a lifestyle change. Mm. It's for you, not for anyone else. And you need to be accountable for what you put into your body. Subhanallah. It's as simple as that. And don't be afraid to be emotional as well, honestly. If you need to be emotional, be emotional. You know when you just last 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 comment of yours <laughs> and ayah comes to mind. Ya ayuhan nas kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiban. Or people eat from what Allah provides, yeah. that which is halal, yeah. which is halal. But why did Allah say tayyiba? It is not talking about just about having halal. Mm. Have that halal which is tayyib, which is good for you. Good for you. And Quran has mentioned that throughout. Yeah. Ev- almost every juz will have some passage talking about eat halal, mm. but eat that halal which is good. Exactly. It's like for example, so if you can justify mm. the tayyiban part of this ayah. Yeah. By going on an application to calculate your calories, that is halal and tayyib for you. Exactly, because you, you you're putting foods into your body. Because if, if you want to look at it from a religious perspective, mm. you're trying to make your body better so you can perform salah. Mm. I used to get out of breath. I was like, <sighs> salah. Yeah. I've still got another two rakats to go. <laughs> you know, but you you get your 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 healthy mind, healthy body. And Alhamdulillah, it, it so helps a lot, so and it's important. I and think the biggest thing is is don't give up. Make sure you focus. Turn up every single day. You know, if you take a break from the gym, it's not the end of it. If you eat something mm. over your calories, it's not the end of it. Make sure you're under that calorie calorie deficit. If you're meant to eat, be eating eighteen hundred calories today, but you ended up eating two thousand, then take away. From the other days, mm. so you're reducing. In all of this, just to summarize, mm. put a a, a spiritual a religious spin to this entire one hour discussion, because as we know, all uh, deeds are based upon your intentions. Yeah. If the intention behind all of this gym routine, lifestyle, diet, calories and calculations, or all this stuff, if we can motivate ourselves to become a strong, a stronger Muslim. Yeah. You're actually implementing a sunnah of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes the hadith Qudsi. That Allah says that an abdun qawiyun, a strong slave, is better than a weak slave. Mm. So the intention is that by me going to gym, by me becoming conscious of my diet and health and all things, I'm able to become more focused in my salah. 100%. I can stand for longer. I yep. can do a longer sajda. Yep. If I go to Haramain for Umrah or Hajj, yep. I can do more tawafs. Exactly. I can do more sa'i. I can exactly. support more people. Yep. And you know, once you're on this, the, on this, this, this transformation that you made, that you're mentioning, then you'll want to do a lot more for other Muslims. Yeah. So then that will open doors to relief work. Yeah. If you can do relief work, then I can go out to those camps. I can be out there for longer, serving people for longer. Yep. It's it it changes your world. A hundred percent. The opportunities are endless. Yeah. And let's not just limit this to calories and our materialistic needs. Yeah. 
But in fact, always remind yourself that ultimately a stronger body, stronger mind, stronger mind, stronger, mind, yeah. stronger heart. Yeah. I know my Lord is happy with me. I know the Rasul is happy with me. Yeah. And I'm doing better justice to my badani a'mal, those a'mal which have to be done with the body. And I can do that better for you. You can do it a lot better. Sure. No restrictions as well. Akil Bhai, brilliant. No, Allah like reward you. Feel, it's huh? been highly inspirational <laughs> for the last two evenings we've uh, spent <laughs> together on these podcasts. Inshallah, uh, I will remind everyone to join and follow Akibai on his uh, uh, Instagram pages. Um, and uh, Inshallah, we'll see you. Inshallah. Soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.